everybody, welcome back to another tech tutorial here on the John Morris channel. I'm, of course, your tech master, John Morris. Today we're going to be getting into the null coalescing operator, which is new in PHP 7. I'm going to show you what it is, how to use it, why you would want to use it, some different usages, and so forth. So if you've been wanting to get the lowdown on this new operator, then you'll definitely want to stick around for this video. Now, I've been making sure to mention this and everything that I'm putting out now so that you guys can make sure you're getting access to all of the information that you want. I have kind of split up a little bit the the different things that I'm putting out there. So I have a podcast I run, I have the blog, I have the channel here, and I've started doing longer form podcasts purely over on the podcast, not here putting them up on YouTube like I used to. So Mostly what you're going to find here is the shorter videos, the tech tutorials, and so forth here on YouTube. If you want the longer form podcast where I dive deeper into things like career, getting hired, maybe it's it's definitely less techy than these kind of tutorials here, but it gets into some of the things you can do about freelancing or getting hired for jobs, more the career side of things, then you'll definitely want to check out the podcast, johnmorrisonline.com slash iTunes or johnmorrisonline.com slash Android to su subscribe on those different devices. Or you can always hit johnmorrisonline.com slash SoundCloud if you want to listen to it just uh, in your web browser. All right, so with that out of the way, what is the new coalescing operator in PHP 7? Well, using, and I'm taking this straight from the manual, so you're getting the official word here. It was added for the common case of needing to use a ternary in conjunction with is set. Okay, so you've, you first kind of have to understand PHP's ternary operator. I'm going to go into that a little bit here, but if you don't understand what that is, if you've never heard of it, then then maybe make uh, look that up a little bit there in Google, ternary, T-E-R-N-A-R-Y, and, and understand how that works because this is essentially a shorthand for a common usage of that turn, ternary operator, right? So as someone over on Stack Overflow put it, which I thought was a good way of summing it up, it using the no coalescing, coalescing operator will make it auto check for null unlike the ternary, okay? So what does, what does that mean? All right, so this is the old way. This is the standard way or the common usage that they're referring to in the manual of using a ternary operator. And you can see, if you're not familiar with the ternary operator, the way this reads essentially is we're setting username equal to, and this is like an if statement. So if get user is set, then we're going to the, the first option. If that's true, this first block, that's what we're going to do. Whereas if it's false, then we're going to do this second block. So this is a bit essentially like an if else statement or a shorthand for an if else statement. So if get user is set, then we're going to set username to the value of get user. Otherwise, we're going to set it else. We're going to set it to nobody. And so you can see that when you see it that way, this is a common thing that you might do when working with uh, user submitted data, pulling data from a database or working with data on a form or working with a data that may have been passed in a URL. You always have to check and make sure you actually got the data. And so this is a shorthand for, for doing that when you need to set some sort of default if you don't get the user submitted data. And that's essentially what this is doing. But if you look at it, you can see it's kind of redundantly redundant. So it, it's it's more complicated than it probably really needs to be. And so this is where the null coalescing operator comes into play. So this is going to do the exact same thing as this up here. This, this line down here, line 14, will do exactly what line 10 does. The difference is, is you don't have all this complicated is set and so forth. And so what it does is it, it essentially goes through each one of the chained, and we'll talk about chaining here in a second, chained uh, whatever you have set there and checks to see if they're, they're set and if they're not null. So it's essentially like running is set and uh, not is null on each one of these. And the first one it finds that is both set and not null that it's going to stop there and it's going to set this username equal to that value. So if get user were set, then it would set username to the value of get uh, get user. If not, it's going to go to this next one 
And since this is just a string declaration, there's no, we're actually setting it right here. It's going to set it to the value of nobody, All right? So again, this line 10 and line 14 accomplish the exact same thing. You can just see it's a lot simpler code. Now, at first blush, that may seem like, okay, well, that's handy. It's a nice, you know, it saves us some time. But when we get into chaining, this is when you can start to see the power of this. Because you can chain, you see here, I have four, on line 21, I have four different variables or four different options that are chained here. And it's going to continue to just go through each one of those until it finds one that is set and not null. Okay. So if we look over here on the right hand side in our output, we see that we have some different numbers here and these represent the different echoes I have here. So in this first one, I'm, I'm, I'm running the no coalesce operator and I'm checking to see if A exists and is not null, D, variable B, and then if all else fails, I'm going to set it to a value of three. Well, we can look up here and see, okay, there's no A set anywhere. So we know A doesn't exist. And then if we go to D, well, there's no D that exists in here either. So these first two are going to fail because they're, they're not set. Then we get to B and we see that B is set to 12. So the way the operator works, it should stop there and then simply just echo 12. And if you look over here, that's exactly what it does is that it echoes 12. Okay. So we can chain multiples. You can chain as many as you want. So you can chain multiple of these together to, to rapidly check uh, and make sure that a value that you're looking for specifically is, is set. And if not, be able to set some sort of default. All right. If we go to the next line here, then we're checking for a and we're checking for F we're checking for C and then setting to one. Now, the reason I point this one out is because it's important to remember that this is a null co coalesce <laughs> coalescing operator, not a false coalescing operator. So that could be something that may be a trap you fall into. So it's not going to check if the value is set to true or false or anything like that. The only thing it's going to check is if it's set and if it's not null. So we can check here again, running through line 22, we can see that variable a is set is, is not set so it's not set so that's going to be false we're going to go on to f we can see f is set but it's set to null so this is actually going to fail as well because again the, the operator checks if it's uh, set and not null so since this is set to null this is going to fail as well then we look at c and c is set to zero so the, the operator, the way it works, should return the value of C because while it's set to zero, it's not null, okay? And if you look up here, you see that that's what it echoes is zero. So it's important to remember that it's a null coalescing operator, not a false coalescer, coalescing operator. And then you can see down here, just as a last example, we have the variable G and the variable H, neither of which exist. And so we end up with our default of seven over here. Okay. So that's the null coalescing operator. That's how it works. That's how, are you, how you would use it. Some of the little intricacies of it. The, the, the way that you would most likely use this is again, really what we're looking at here with get parameters, maybe post parameters, maybe something being pulled from the database. It's where you have user submitted data, or it could be configuration data possibly, but probably most likely going to be user submitted data that you need to check and see if it's set. And if it's not set, you need to provide some sort of default so that whatever your script you're writing can continue to process it, knowing there either is or isn't that data. All right. So hopefully that's clear as mud for you uh, now. If you'd like to get access to this source code, all the source code that I have available, you can do so as a supporting listener over on Patreon. That's johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. Lots of good stuff. Lots of source code over there for you uh, to get access to. And I'd greatly appreciate that. It helps me continue to put these, these videos out for you. Also, if you'd like to learn more PHP and get even better at PHP, then I want to encourage you to head to johnmorrisonline.com slash learn PHP. And you can take my free beginner's guide to PHP course there. Uh, absolutely free. Just enroll in the course. You'll have access to the videos, the source code, all of that stuff. 
right? So again, that's johnmorrisonline.com slash learnphp. All right, thanks for watching this one. We'll talk to you next time.